Hello, everybody. I'm Maxine Silva, the host of Building Bridges, Discovering Your Path to Peace. Today, I'm, I'm more than delighted. Uh, our special guest is our newest Canadian citizen. Just recently, I guess in January, uh, Tarek Hadhad became a Canadian. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, he hails from Damascus, Syria. And everybody has been hearing about Syria and the issues that are in the news. And, uh, but I think what's most important is they don't know very much about Syria. And why are people having to flee? And what is going on there? But I have to just say, before I introduce you formally to Tarek, that he is more than likely a household name now throughout Canada having met with Prime Minister Trudeau and President Obama. I am so proud to be a Canadian knowing you, my friend. So without any further ado, everybody, Tarek Hadhad. I'm uh, so happy that you're Thank here. you so much, Maxine. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. It's, yes. Uh, it's my honor, uh, it's my honor to be with you. Thank you for, um, for having me. Thank you for uh, the beautiful background that you have behind you. Building bridges is exactly what we need right now. It is really an honor for me to be speaking to you. Uh, as you have mentioned, from, my name is From Terry right up Hampshire. here, Halifax, Nova Scotia. <laughs> the yes, little I red can dot see it. on the yes. map. <laughs> that's where we both are. Yes. Absolutely. That's, that's yes. Yes. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's a great country to be in right now, and you just said it. It is one of the times where there's so much division, so much pessimism, so much negativity, and people don't know a lot about those countries affected by war and violence, and they just need inspirations and they need positive stories to reflect their perspective on an entire nation. Uh, based on it. You know, I'm against stereotyping, but now we need to focus more on telling these positive stories to the world so we have less negativity, less pressure, less tensions between nations. And the world is connected more than ever, like in a, in a press of my, of my thumb. I can just call uh, a friend in Germany or in Denmark or in Japan or in South Africa. It does not matter. Now the whole world is connected. Yes. But we yes. as human beings, we are getting separated more and more because of politicians, because of those who are dividing us, because of those who are claiming that we are so different than each other. But we are not. We are all yes. human beings. That's true. We have true. the same amount of, we yeah, have the same amount of bones, we have the same amount of blood, <laughs> and we are, we are exactly the same, identical. Yes. The whole premise of, of building bridges and discovering your path to peace is that it doesn't matter your religion, your ethnicity, the color of your skin, where you come from. At the root, we're all human first. Everything else is man-made. So we exactly. need to connect with our own humanity. And by doing that, we are then able to open ourselves up and we need to communicate. We need to talk like this direct, one-on-one, -on -one, to realize we are all the same. Same wants, needs, and desires. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. This is yeah. this is a beautiful yeah. way to say it. And uh, as uh, as I always say, we have the same goal all in life: is to live in peace, enjoy safety, share our talent and our skills with others for the better future for everyone and for our kids. Uh, that they are our ambassadors in the future that we will never live. Absolutely. Right. We are sending everyone into this future. So as much as we can build this footprint to everyone uh, to, to reflect on our impact in the world before we leave this planet. Yes. This is what's important. Um, so uh, it is really a great mission that you are on, building bridges. That's exactly what we do since we, we came to Canada, is we are connecting these two beautiful cultures, yes. the Middle Eastern cultures, the Syrian culture, and the Canadian culture. We are finding the points where we can all um, connect and reflect on this connection for, for the best of, of this country. And Canada was built on waves of people coming to have a better future for themselves and their families. People who left from, from Europe during the second, First and Second World War, people who left from uh, Vietnam uh, and came here as refugees, Syrian refugees, Iraqi refugees, all of those kind of people who didn't want to leave their homeland, but yes. they were forced to. 
right? Like myself, I did not choose to leave Syria, but because I was forced to, because I lost everything. And I say that no one's decision is to become an immigrant. No one's life goal is to become a refugee. I did not wake up one day and I say, what do I want to become in the future? And I said, I want to become a refugee. I did not say that. It must have been horrific for you and your family. Absolutely, absolutely. And it is really hard. And I think the more I share this story, I'm a public speaker, so I go and speak around the country and around the world about the importance of including refugees, including immigrants. Yes. Let them in the game. Let them in the equation. Don't exclude them because they have so much to offer. And they are contributors. They did not come to Canada or to European countries or they didn't travel around the world to take from anyone because already some countries and some people took a lot from them. So they know the pain of taking. Yes. They want to give. They want to give back. They want to contribute. Yes. And that's what we are doing you know, right now. When you came to Canada, I was living in India at that time. Oh, okay. And That's I told great. everybody, I was so, so proud to be a Canadian. We open our doors for so many places, including the U.S., etc. Cut them and say, no, 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 you stay away, you know. And, and it's like, it made me want to come back to Canada. You're one of the reasons I came back here, actually. Wow, that's a great statement. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had, I'd been living in India six years in, in Bali, Indonesia, three years before that. And I was sort of trying to find out who's Maxine, you know, where do I go? What do I do with the rest of my life? And then I saw you uh, and your family coming and I thought, I need to go back home. And so I, I did. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It's a great yeah. country to be to be in. You know, every time I travel outside of the country and come back, I feel that I arrived home. And you exactly know the feeling when you land at any of the airports. Like when I come back to, to Pearson Airport or when I land in, in Halifax, now yeah. I feel that I belong here, right? Yes. And the sense of belonging, let me just explain a little bit about the sense of belonging is so important. When we had our life going on in Syria and I was, I was an aspiring physician. My family had a chocolate factory. Every one of us had a mission in their lives, figured out. We figured out our life, as we said. Right. But then everything was taken from us. Everything was destroyed. Our factory was bombed in the war in Syria in 2012. My brother was, uh, and I, we were talking on a sidewalk and the mortar rocket hit near us. So I was injured in my leg. My brother lost his consciousness. I carried him. We ran into the house. Wow. And then at that time, I realized that my cousin was killed in the war, other cousins and my brother-in-law was arrested and went missing. Many of my family members were scattered around the world. They lost their sense of belonging, they lost their country. Mm -hmm. And now they are in 26 countries. So at that time, I started reflecting about home and the sense of belonging. And I just realized that uh, home can be the place of uh, the place of birth but also home is what you want to be yeah. and home is the place that give you the sense of peace yeah. peace is so important that no one can go out and build a business without peace you cannot get education without peace you cannot raise a family without peace we cannot talk to you i couldn't have talked to you today without right. living and knowing that i am yes. peaceful and i am living in peace and no one a mortar rocket would not hit me right now as I'm talking to you. You know, these kind of feelings are so important. And this is the, the, the ideal values that all of our human beings, um, the, the, you know, the whole species of human beings, we all seek to have this kind of, of peace and, and uh, enjoy, enjoy it with our family and our connections. So I started reflecting that the sense of belonging always connects a lot to safety and peace and the place that offer you joy and happiness and make you feel calm and make you feel that you just arrived. Whether it's the place that you were born in or whether the place that you decided to travel, whether it's, it's right the city that you are in or the place that is 7,000 kilometers far away as I traveled in 2015 sure. between Syria and arriving in Nova Scotia in Canada. So that is really important for everyone to know that we human beings, I realized, I, I had this idea that 
we cannot leave. Like, what is the idea of leaving Syria even? Like, we are like trees. If we went out, we will die. If somebody, you know, cut our root, we will die. But apparently human beings are not like trees. We have legs and that is for a purpose. We have legs so we can move. We have legs so we can travel. We have legs so we can find our opportunity. We have legs so we can meet new people. We don't have neighboring trees all around us all the time, right? That we cannot leave. It but is what it does is it gives us the responsibility of taking care of one another. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's another beautiful thing that adds to it. So reflecting on all of those connections and all of those um, uh, gifts that we have as a human being yeah. which was so important to us. And uh, arriving in Canada with nothing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with a $10 in my pocket when I landed in uh, yes. Toronto yeah. in, uh, in December 2015, and then my family arrived three weeks after me. It, it was shocking uh, to, to start learning a little bit about the differences in the culture and the differences in the place. Sure, I had no doubt. I had no doubt that Canada now is my home. Well, and the way what? that I was welcomed at the airport There are a was... number of things that I'm curious about. One sure. is, why did you end up in Nova Scotia? Not that I don't <laughs> think it's a good place for you to that be, but it's off the beaten track for most. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I am uh, I am from a big city. I'm from Damascus. Yes, yes. And uh, Damascus is, you know, we, as you know, it's it's a center central city in the Middle yeah, East and has capital. millions of people living there. <laughs> yeah. So um, when the Canadian consul in Lebanon, he told me, "Where do you want to be in Canada?" And I said, "Anywhere in the MTV." And you know what the MTV is? The MTV for immigrants is Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. <laughs> I'm thinking music, television. No, whatever, no, it's, right? it's not that. MTV oh, for oh, immigrants. Oh. Well, else. well you're not unlike everybody else, though. Uh, no, no. I asked him to be in a big city because that's that's the the first destination that immigrants want to be in, right? Because they think that big cities offer you many more opportunities than living in a small town or a small province. The more people you interact with every day, give you more sense of of um, opportunity, of success, of happiness. And the more things happen around you, just give you the feeling that you just arrived. And, and the Canadian consul in Lebanon in 2015, he told me, why do you want to be in Montreal? Why do you want to be in Toronto? Why do you want to be in Vancouver? What if you and your family went to a small town? And I said, how could we ever start in a small town? He said, in a small town, you will find a group of community members all around you, they want to support you, they want to see you successful. And they will take you as part of their family from your first day. Wow. And I really liked the explanation. I liked the description he gave me. And I said, okay, let's let's try it. And but I thought he would choose like a small town in Ontario. So if I didn't <laughs> like it, I can just move to Toronto. Yes. He did not. He did not actually. So my my application was uh, still mysterious by the end of 2015. I, I was on the plane from Beirut to Toronto, and I had no idea that I would be in Nova Scotia. I did not hear about Nova Scotia before coming here. I so see. I arrived in December in 2015. Um, I, I landed um, from the plane, and I did my interview with the CBSA, the Canadian Border Service Agency. Everything went, went so awesome, and then they told me the next hour, they told me, your flight is tomorrow. I said, where? I just arrived. Don't send me back to Syria. He said, no, 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 we are not sending you back to Syria. He said, we are sending you to Nova Scotia. And I said, where well, is Nova that? Scotia? I want to stay in Canada. I said, I want to stay in Canada. <laughs> he said, Nova Scotia is in Canada, just on the other side of the country. So I was on the plane from Toronto to Nova Scotia later in, in, uh, in the day. And I arrived in, in Halifax. And I was fully surprised that... Uh, there was a group called SAFE, Syria Antigonish Families Embrace. Uh, the acronym SAFE um, was for this amazing community group that they have done fundraising, they have done uh, uh, awareness campaigns, they have prepared their committees uh, wow. to um, welcome these newcomers and, and Syrians to this town. And they only targeted one family, which is our family, 
Oh. Everything happened by random choice. Everything happened because the size of my family matched the donations that this community group has fundraised. Wow. And it was so awesome. Like when I landed in Halifax, I saw this amazing, bright-minded, welcome, welcoming, friendly, nice Canadians wow. waiting for me at the airport with flags, with signage of saying, welcome to Canada Tarek in Arabic and English, uh, flowers. And I was so heartwarmed like I'm you sure. don't see that every day right no you don't around the world no. people don't go to the airports with flowers and flags and and uh, signages and they they uh, drive two hours from their location to the airport to welcome a stranger because i was a stranger they did not know me right it's, i did not know small them. town not know me. it's small town big heart big heart exactly so the only thing they cared about that i was a human being yeah. that was seeking safety and peace. Yeah. And they wanted to support me to restart my life here in Canada. So that's how the story started. It's, it's a, a group of warm-hearted Canadians. They did not care about my ethnicity. They did not care about my skin color. They did not care about my background. They did not care about what I did before. They did not really ask me any questions. They just cared that I am a human being. Wow. That was oh, seeking lovely. safety and peace. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's a story of, beautiful of the story. Time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sort of so your your business is Peace by Chocolate, which yes. you were when you had the factory in in uh, in Syria in Damascus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before it was bombed, what was the name of it? It was it was called uh, my my family's name. It was the the had had establishment uh, for see. chocolate. So it was the had, had factory. Okay. Yes. So now, now we I, I read that your your father had made some chocolate and was selling it at a, a market, right? That's and it right. went very quickly. And that gave you guys the idea that, hey, this is something we can do, right? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But how did you come up with the name Peace by Chocolate? Uh, well, you know, we wanted to reflect a message in our name. We did not want the people just to eat the chocolate and forget the story. Yeah. We did not want people to throw out the packaging and then just forget about it. You know, they will pay three, five dollars, ten dollars on a chocolate box. And then, then when they eat the chocolate, it's gone. Mm -hmm. We wanted it to be a lasting message. And we wanted it to uh, stick to the minds of the people and connect it to the value that speaks to everyone. And that value was peace as I mentioned, because yes, sir, yes, of course. peace is, is a noble thing and we should all fight for it. We lost everything in Syria in the blink of an eye in 2012 and we did not really know that uh, it is even possible to lose it because we were living in peace in Syria and we did not really know what to expect, what is life hiding for us. So um, we uh, thought that peace by chocolate Peace is a noble value. Chocolate is a product of happiness. Bridge them together. People will love them. And everyone wants chocolate peace. puts you at peace. <laughs> yes. The way we say it is everyone wants peace and everyone loves chocolate. Yes, that's very That's our true. proposition value. That's our proposition value. Yes. Well, yes. That's, that's, that's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So in, in Syria, before all of this strife happened, now, Forgive me if I get it wrong, but my understanding is that uh, Syria is, a, is, is sort of the, the puppet between Russia and Turkey, right? Caught in the middle of this war right. between these two yeah. nations. Is this correct? Um, it's kind of, Syria is a place where big powers, they don't want to fight directly. So Syria is the playground for all of these powers to fight. And it has a strategic location yeah. that everyone in the world really was, was trying to get there, like between the Russians or the Turkish or the, the Americans or everyone around the world. They wanted to take part of the cake. So it was um, kind of an interesting um, uh, thing to have start happening, like, you know, centuries and centuries ago. It goes back to historical uh events that happened and it was not of the fault of the people that they live there right now mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. again so damascus is the oldest capital in the world it goes back five thousand years 
and um, Syria has, uh, you know, ports in Latakia in Tartus on the Mediterranean. So mm -hmm. it was uh, a kind of an interesting country for like everyone to uh, target, everyone to uh, try to take part of it. And I think the Russians and the, Tur the Turks are, are just part of the of the international game um, mm -hmm. against against Syria for sure, which is really sad. I mean, um, we. We lived there, we were born there, my grandfather was born there, every one of my family members that go to centuries and centuries ago, they were born there. So uh, it was, and it is our homeland. It yes, is uh, where the, my family, where my family was rooted. It is where we have built our dreams and our memories. Okay. And not for any of these nations really to take them from us. Not, not that now we have, we have kind of any understanding about where the country even is going. Mm -hmm. which is really dangerous. Um, this is why Peace by Chocolate. You ask me why Peace by Chocolate, I wanted it to become uh, a, an icon about peace, where people really remember. We don't want to see more, num more refugees, more people leaving or, or being forced to leave their homes. Okay, let's think about peace. We don't want to cause more suffering to the world. Okay, let's talk about peace. So, Turek, has it gotten worse for the Syrian people now? Because all I hear about on the news, it's really, is it media that's exploiting it? Or is it really like that there? It is really, uh, I think it, it is both. Uh, it is some, uh, you know, some, some media discourse is, uh, is still uh, trying to um, promote uh, the, the country wrongly and just promote some of the events and uh, the, the battlefields and the, the whatever is happening there. But I think what is happening right now is uh, a disgrace to the whole um, future for our kids that we are going to tell them, which is yes. not really the ideal thing that we wanted to tell them anyway. So yes. it is really, really, I mean, no one understands what's happening there. It is still a big, uh, a big game. Yeah. But well, um, one part of my family members, they still live there. Uh, are you in communication with them? Are you able to? We are, yes, yes, yes we yes. are. And how, and are, they, how are they doing? How are they doing? Uh, they are living day by day. Like you can't plan for your future. You can't plan. You can't plan for the future of your kids. You can't plan for um, for the next day. It is really uh, difficult for everyone to be there yeah. at this moment. And and here in in this country, we're worried about what are we we're planning for supper? What are we going to have to eat tonight? Exactly. Right. Yes, and yes. and in there, it's like, will, will I be alive tomorrow? Will we have that a place right. to live? Um, you know, we've never known anything like that in this country. No, no, so, no. So no, I am no. really glad that you're telling your story because people need to hear it. And they need to understand who you are as a human being. Yes? Yes, and, exactly. Uh, and, yes. and, you know, I also was reading or I saw in a video or whatever, I'm not sure, about when you were born. And uh, <laughs> and about naming you, it was your father who said doctor. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and then I guess your mother said Tarek. I mean, that is, Dr. Tarek. Yeah, I had I had a quite an interesting uh, start of my life. I mean, uh, ninety nine percent of the Syrian mothers they want their kids to become physicians, and the one percent of them they want of them to be engineers. Yes. So yes, my yes. mother from was from the ninety nine percent. It was my mom actually, not my dad. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Then I. <laughs> yeah, who was um, really uh, excited about the idea of me becoming a physician, and uh, I, I was see. on that path finally. I yeah. see. Oh, uh, amazing! Well, God, God bless your mom. <laughs> well. Yeah, exactly. So you should. I mean, you connect. I mean, mothers connect all over the world. I think this is part of the the goal for every single mother is uh, every every mother around the world is to. Uh, yeah. See their, you know, her kids uh, just growing up uh, in a, a great environment and have a, a, a life, a lifelong uh, uh, stable careers. I guess that's why they wanted uh, so much to become either a physician or an engineer because they see it as a stable future where you secure yourself and uh, your family. Um, there is a lot of risk in everything else. There is a lot of risk in business and yeah, well, business people are true. risk takers. Well, do you, do you have any plans for your for your medical education to further it, or or, or I 
you don't know yet. What I know actually is where I am now. And that's what I learned to enjoy is I learned to know where I am right now. And because everything has changed so fast. So that is why I don't know what's happening next year. Actually, I am planning for the bigger picture. And the bigger picture for me and my family is uh, to be in Canada, call it our home and live in peace. And that and, is what matters. And, and you know everything, what? Everything else is a detail. The biggest accolades I can give you is that you are an ambassador for peace. And I thank you for that because mm. we need more Tarek Harhads. We do, we really do. So in closing, I want to ask you, what, what is it you would like to share with people? And I'm ho hoping this is heard and seen far and wide. What is your message for world peace? Um, I really hope to, um, to wake up one day and just uh, learn that we are more understanding uh, human beings. We are willing to learn about others. We are willing to sacrifice a little bit so other people can uh, enjoy a little bit of peace and safety. I really hope that um, world leaders right now can take more concrete steps so uh, we don't repeat the mistakes that happened in the past. There is a lot of mistakes. Uh, there's nothing good in war except its ending. This is the only thing that is good in war is, is when it ends. Yes. And I'm sure that so many people in the world, they connect to this message. Uh, because, um, uh, again, we uh, want to see the world a more peaceful place where, uh, you know, who suffers the most are the most vulnerable and mm -hmm. civilians. Uh, because, you know, military people, soldiers, they don't. Like, they are doing, they are doing something that they are commanded to do. Those who suffer are civilians, are victims, are are the kids and the women and the men who did not want to be part of it, who did not really choose to lose everything at the blink yes. of an eye yes. and being asked to leave. And we are still seeing these waves of refugees now between Turkey and Greece and the violent reaction of some of the countries against them. You know, so many of them were shot dead. So many of them, they couldn't make it. So many of them, they were just dreaming of getting their kids into schools in Germany or anywhere in, in the Scandinavian uh, countries. But that did not happen. Yes. So. I think that if there is, if there is a message that uh, we really hope that um, as we are more connected right now, we build on the values that we share together from, from empathy, from tolerance, uh, from sharing our cultures together and celebrate our differences that makes us strong. Yes. Um, Canada is a great example of understanding our differences in diversity and culture. We still have a long, long, way to go i think we are on the right path hopefully yes. and um, i would love one day to see that uh, canada is a uh, is hundred percent perfect example uh, to the world when you know when um, yes. we we treat um, everyone in this land equally when we know that there is still lots of of suffering uh, from indigenous people across this country that they don't have safe water to drink they don't have the same opportunity as everyone else across this country and this is a great and noble mission for everyone in, in, around, in Canada and around the world to see those who are suffering the most and try to do something to change their uh, presence so big things can happen in the future. And we yes. see that the most, the, you know, more, most of the threats that are happening around the world right now are related to global issues like climate change, like environment, like connecting to our roots and solving the issues that they have been um, uh, out there for four centuries. So I really hope that throughout these little things, we can change the world. One piece at a time, one piece of chocolate That's at right. a time. Deliciously so. <laughs> and you know what? Yes. Many people will say, what can I do? I'm only one person. You can walk yeah. down the street and smile at a stranger. It's a gift. Absolutely. It's a gift. It's the power of little things, Maxine. It's the power, the power of little things. Yes. Um, as you mentioned, you know, going out and helping someone in, in need uh, that you don't know, it is, this is what's going to make the difference. It's the collective efforts of these little things that will change the future for everyone. Wonderful. Do Syrians speak Arabic? Is that is it your, your native that tongue? That is correct, yes. How do I say thank you in Arabic? You say shukran. 
Shukran. I did know yeah. it. Shukran. <laughs> and then, and then the hand wave here. Shukran. Yes, Shukran, exactly. Yes. Friend. Thank you. I am so, so thrilled and delighted and appreciate you so much, Tarek. Keep on going, kid. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maxine. Assalamu alaikum. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a good day. Bye.